Hi everybody, my name is Julio Salgado and welcome to another edition of Taco Talk, New York edition. What? It wasn't the budget, I guess. For today's episode, we have the one and only Christy Rod, everybody. Blue! Oh, yeah. well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here because I've been following your career for the past couple of years and I feel like you're doing what I've been wanting to do all my life, which is make drawings and have a band. But before yeah. we get into onto all of that conversation, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna try some tacos. Shout out to Regalos de Juquila, who hooked it up with some amazing tacos. Well, I didn't get tacos. I got a burrito. I got a carnita burrito, because I'm a little perk. We're gonna have a burrito and your chicken taco. And sorry, you're not here. What did you think about the food? I loved it. I'm not, I'm gonna think about it for a while and then I'm probably gonna order one. Before we get into the whole, like your art and your music, we wanna know, where was Christy born? Where was Christy raised? Tell us about She's that. from Miami. I was born in 1982 and I became a grown up in like 1984. That's when I just became very connected to art and it was a difficult time. My parents got divorced, my dad moved out, and you know, it was like this, this weird feeling of like, oh, we're, you know, like what are we gonna do with this now? And, um, and sadness, and we're children, and we don't know, but making art was such a therapeutic thing for both me and my sister. It was around the time that I was like 10, 11, when I started feeling disconnected from like the struggles that were happening around me, because I was like, realized that I was queer, and then that became, this huge focus of my journey as like a creator. And that was the thing when I was uh, a teen and I came out, like I found punk as the thing to save me. But while it was saving me, it was like removing me from right. my my family and my spiritualities. And it felt right at the time, because it was like, oh, you know, fuck all the homophobia and in Catholicism and I found this. This is like my religion now, you know? I learned how to play guitar when I was 13. Then when I was 15, my mom and my family, they were like, this weirdo is not gonna have a bean fist. What's the point? She's like this punk rocker weirdo. So I got a Fender Stratocaster for my King Sis and it was like this magical, life-changing gift. I learned every Green Day song. I was so dedicated. I started going by Christy Rowe, the Green Day song, and Cristina Carrera. She's just the La Profesora. Okay. And like me in the bank. At 23, I like grew my hair out. I came out to my family. And that was when I was like, all right, so La Cubanita, the punk, and the baby dyke are all gonna be this one creature, finally. Let's get into the part that I like love about what you do is you've been in bands. And I hate when journalists ask women, what it's like to be a woman in a, in a music <laughs> But! <laughs> no, but this, when said, people ask me that, sometimes yeah. I'm like, let me tell you. Like, let me talk shit about all your sound guy friends. Mm -hmm. Being an artist, it's like different because people are gonna see your drawing and then make a decision. But with music, for some reason, your band isn't enough. Like hearing mm. your band isn't enough. They always have some advice and they always have an example of somebody who did it before you better. It's bullshit because then it's like it holds you back. You're just like, what's the point of even doing this? I play pop punk music. That's what I write, that's what I love. It's Green Day, Crim Shrine, and Drunken Bowl. This is my fist. Like all these amazing pop punk bands I grew up with. Pop punk has a lot of roots in like sexism and apolitical values and just like being a little shock rock. And then there was this whole thing that happened in the Bay Area with Green Day and in Minneapolis and in the South where there was like political pop punk bands like Operation Cliff Clavin would be one. And the fact that like I wanted to bring feminism into that, it was just hard. It was like yeah. the early 2000s and it was hard to find a band. The people in the community were just like, they just didn't seem interested and they'd be like, this song's so good. And then they'd be like, but I'm gonna play music with these guys. There was so many things I could blame. There was so many people that I could see through. Like, you don't wanna deal with my feminism. You don't wanna deal with my race. You don't wanna deal with like my queerness. You don't wanna deal with singing songs about healing from abuse. It just took a long ass time to find a community that wanted to do that. 
And then when I eventually met people who were in that world, they already had bands, and it was just like, it was very hard to have a band. If I want to be in a feminist queer band, I start a hardcore band. Or I start a legit folk punk band yeah. with like washboard and bucket drums, you know, anarchist, like real, no electricity. And I was like, what? I want harmonies, three part harmonies, really nice gear, and I want my blue Stratocaster to look really cute and like photos, and we're all gonna wear ponytails. Yeah, like, this artists. is my it. feminism. <laughs> like, it's right. reclaiming femme, it's right. reclaiming all these things that you see in so many pop punk bands. So I eventually met musicians who wanted to work with me and it was really life changing to be taken seriously as a songwriter um, by people who wanted to play pop punk music. I started a band called The Home Records in 2007, 2008. We lasted for eight years. It was me and the bass player, Jay, like we started it together and we died. We killed it together. The journey of that band is where I learned how to be a musician, how mm. to sustain it, how to like collaborate with people. I don't, did not know how to collaborate with people. Musically, is not even a problem. Like if we all love how we play and love similar stuff, it'll sound awesome if we just like work on a song and that's been my experience. But it's about lifestyle and values and what you are gonna do on tour, what you're gonna do at a show. Like, are you okay with the sound guy um, being completely sexist or are you gonna help me fight him? Being in a punk rock band involves all that sacrifice. It can be grueling to just tour, pay off the tour, make ends meet, nobody's spending money. But like, to some people, to not make any money on that journey is grueling for them. And for me, it's not, because I'm like, living the dream, we're punks and I'm making my money off of my teacher job. What are some tips that you have for younger folks, uh, not just younger folks, but like older folks who are starting their career later in their lives? For me, what has worked and what I probably will never let go of is, you know, sit down, meditate, and think about like, what is it that you would love to do and that you would enjoy doing? What does your body want to do? Song lyrics or solos? There is pressure to do certain things because yeah. of because um, of capitalism yeah. and because of sexism and because of all these terrible things that like we're expected to do certain things yeah. and and then not excel at like the craft we like daydream yeah. about. So for me, it's like all of my choices are very fueled by like the daydreams. What are you currently working on right now, and where can people find your work? Um, they can always find everything on crowdcore.org. If you go on now, you'll be hearing a lot about my new band, Choked Up, and my Next World Tarot Card Deck, the vision that we all have based on justice and um, the impeachment of the president. Choked Up is my new band, and this band is this anomaly magic beast. We're all Latinos, and like, oh, that's so weird. This is the first that you've had a yes. band? Yes! Yeah, wow. first time, and it just happened. And now we're all emotionally attached to it, so it's like, you know, we we'll work hard. Thank you so much, Christy, for being Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was delicious. I'm, and there's a little flan here. We're going to eat it right now. The little we're gonna flan. Share it. We're going to share it yes. with two spoons. Yes. It was great meeting you. It was Lula. great to meet you. Imagine. I can't believe you're a Virgo. I am a Virgo. I'm so jealous to, to be such a peppy Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh.